Tonight on the Al Denson Show, join Al and his guests, evangelist radio host Dawson McAllister, Goatee Records recording artist Jeff Dio, Jeff Calhoun, and the Al Denson Show Band. Now, here's your host, Al Denson. Welcome to the Al Denson Show. First thing I gotta say is, man, if you're sitting at home, you're wondering what all the screen is about. Man, we're having a blast here, man. This is like one of the coolest things we're ever gonna do. Man. And believe it or not, you're you're looking at a, a, a group here that has come in. I mean, there's a good hundred plus of them strong just to be our studio audience. And and always during the week we play laser tag, and it's amazing that that you know is how much older I am than these kids, but they can never seem to beat me at, at laser tag. So I, I don't know what the problem. Is. But anyway, you know. My name is Al Denson. I understand. I know you're sitting there looking at my shirt going, what is the deal? Jeff and I just got back from doing this Hawaii thing, and this was my present. So I thought, well, you know what? We're going to talk about peer pressure on this show. And I wanted you to see that peer pressure did not influence the dress that I wear. I just figured I'd just come out and just kind of put this shirt on and see what was going on, you know? But the wild thing is, is since we're talking about peer pressure, the goal is to kind of get people, you know, parents and kids to start talking about what we're talking about, because they're life issues. They're things that we face every day in our single lives. So, Jeff, I, I want to do an experiment. In fact, those of you watching at home, pay attention, because we're doing an experiment right here, and this is for you, too. So please participate with us. All you guys in the studio, here's what I want to do. I want to take a look at this. i got two cards here. I have these two cards right here. They're nice and flat. You can see them. Now, here's what I want you to do. Now, listen to me. I want you to raise your hands. I don't want you to say a word. I just want you to raise your hands. We're going to try to figure out which card has the longest line on it. So we're going to find out first. So here, let me get, get you to look at it again. Take a look at it. Now, remember, these are cameras now, so pay attention to it. So here's the deal. We'll vote the studio, vote the studio by raising your hand. How many of you think that this card is actually the longest line? Raise your hand. You think this is the longest line? Raise your hand. How many think that's the longest line? Okay. How many think this is the longest line? Okay, hold on. We got, we got some discrepancies. Let's do it this way. How many think this is the longest line? Okay. And how about this one? Okay, let me, let me explain the experiment that we did. Those of you at home, it was kind of funny. This little section that we took out because we told you you were kind of dead and you needed to get a little more sugar in your system. Remember that? Well, that was really just a joke. We took you out because we've had a camera locked down on you guys. Because I told the whole crowd, even though that this is the longest line, I told everybody in the crowd, vote for this one. So sure enough, everybody's going, yeah, man, that's the longest line. And y'all were going, okay, whatever, man. I don't want to be wrong. And, and I don't know what your name is, but you voted for both of them, so I have no clue what you're thinking. But anyway, uh, through the whole process, I mean, peer pressure is definitely a strange thing, and it's amazing how, how influenced we are by what other people think. Hey, I got a phrase I do not want you to miss, and here's what it says. It says, if you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Now, you know what? That's a true statement, and here's the thing is. The peer pressure you experience in your life can either be a positive thing or a negative thing, depending on the friends you hang out with. You know, what we did was we went and talked to kids, because, man, peer pressure is running rampant among high schools, and here's what we did. We asked them this very question. How much do your friends influence your life? And here's what they had to say. A lot, because, um, I mean, they're your friends, you know, they're the people who are around you, like, most of the time. But your friends influence you a lot, because I know the only way I got into drugs, and, you know, a lot of other stuff was because of them, you know, they got me started on it, just, you know, saying, come on, man, just try it one time, and, you know, i just go, okay, and try it once. Like, the main thing is, like, we don't, we don't have to go by, you know, it's not really important to go by your friends and stuff, it's like, we have to look up to Jesus and, you know, what he thinks of us. It's... You know, believe it or not, when we talk about peer pressure, every single one of us has faced peer pressure in our life, and truthfully, we fit in one or two categories. Now, I was trying to figure out the best way to illustrate this to you, and here's what I did. See, in this hand, I have a thermometer. And in this hand, I have a thermostat. Now, let me tell you the difference between the two, okay? This thermometer, what it does, it is controlled by its surroundings, whatever the environment is. So, like, example, if I'm in my house and I have a thermometer that says 70 degrees, it's 70 degrees in my house. But if I go outside and it's like 100 degrees outside, like it is in Texas a lot of times, when I walk out there, this thing's going to show 100 because it's controlled by whatever around it. Now, see, this thermostat, let's say it's 100 degrees in the house and I want it to be 70. Well, I set this thing back, and it turns and cools the house down to 70. This controls the environment. Where you're controlled by your environment with this one, this one controls your environment. 
And see, we both fit in one of those two categories. We either let all of our friends control us, or what we do is we say, no, we're going to take control of our own life, and we're going to be who we are because we know who we are. So we're talking about peer pressure, one of these two categories. We're going to kind of explore it a little bit more to find out which one do you really sit in. So keep it tuned in. We'll be right back here on The Al Vincent Show. <laughs> I think our friends influence us a lot. The way they feel, you feel. If they feel down, they'll eventually bring you down. If you're trying to walk with the Lord, they'll bring you down and not walk. When you change your ways and you, you try to leave the crowd, they'll, they'll make fun of you or they'll say, like, you're worth nothing and that, you know, you're not my friend anymore. I mean, the friends that I have now influence me um, in a really, really good way. They help me um, uh, to walk closer to God. Like, their passion for God, like, inspires me to go deeper in my walk with Jesus. Welcome back to the Al Vincent Show. I am so excited. As we sit and talk about peer pressure, we talk about, you know, how we get influenced and all that kind of stuff. I couldn't think of anybody greater, I mean, to have on the show. You know, I, I, I get kind of blown away sometimes at, at the guests we're able to have on the show. But this guy, you don't understand how uniquely um, humbled I am that he would come on the show and, and just help us out. Now, this, this man has poured more into my life than I could ever, ever, ever say. And, you know, way back when I started singing Christian music, he's the one guy that believed in me and said, hey, come on, man, I want to help show you the ropes. And uh, I thank him for that. And my friend's name is Dawson McAllister. And, he, man, he knows so much about kids and teenagers and raising kids and being able to talk to teenagers. It's amazing to me how he can bridge both gaps. So I want you to please do me an incredible favor and welcome to the Al Vincent Show, my friend Dawson McAllister. Yeah, man. <laughs> now... Mr. McAllister, you need to know something, man. I love you for one straightforward reason. I mean, when I hear you on Sunday nights on the radio, you just, man, I don't know how some of those questions, they fire at you. I don't know how you come up with those answers. I have no clue, man. But you're just straightforward, straight down the pipe. And some of the things you say, I say, I can never say that to somebody, you know. But uh, you shoot so straight. A answer a question. How come we as a society are so influenced by what other people think and, you know, by other people? We lost our anchor. Okay, explain that. We lost our anchor. Explain that. It all started in the garden. Man was made for God. God is our anchor. Okay. We're made to love Him, to know Him, to listen to Him, and follow Him. When man turned away from God, when Eve sinned first and then her husband, what happened? Eve, they hid from God, their anchor, and turned towards each other. Okay. At that point, Eve said, my husband's value of me is more important than God's value of me because I have left God. It all started in the garden. Okay, so if it started in the garden and it, it now applies to us like kids on, on campus, they'll, they'll do so many different things just to get their friend's approval. Why, why do they act like that? 3,000 teenage girls are going to get pregnant tonight out of wedlock. 75% of them will say, I didn't want to have sex to begin with. What are they really saying? What are we saying? And how many guys tonight and women will be killed in gang warfare across America? They're going to die tonight because they were more committed to getting into a gang and finding some kind of security there than coming to grips with the, the only person that can give us security, and that's Jesus Christ. Okay, but there are a lot of kids who say, so Mr. McAllister, I mean, yeah... I know you know what you're talking about, but this God thing, how is that supposed to help me fight peer pressure? It really comes down to this, if you're a Christian. Whose opinion of me do I value more? God or my lost friends? Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm hanging out with my friends and I'm, you know, what do I do? I turn from all my friends and just be lonely? No. There is positive peer pressure, Al. Okay. Did you ever think about that? The Bible says, now minute, let's talk about this. Yeah, the Bible says this in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. I have my Bible here. I'm ready for it. Held together by duct tape. Yes. All right. That works. Now listen to this. Now tell me if this isn't, this is for Christians. Okay. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. The word there in the Greek is like a spur. You know, you spur a horse sure, and it moves yeah. on. Let us consider how to spur one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. So one of the things that you do, first thing you do is this. You say, God, I love you. I realize that if I'm a Christian, there's going to be all kinds of negative peer pressure. Right. And the Bible says, he who lives godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I love you so much, God, 
that even if my, quotes friends right. turn against me because of my faith, right. because of my convictions, because my convictions make them nervous. Right. Do you ever think about yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely, big time. The Bible says men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They don't want to come to the light. If I want to live for Jesus Christ, I am walking in the light, and they do not want the light. So I stop and I say, okay, God, first of all, I'm going to get my convictions from you. I'm going to get centered in you. I'm going to, your opinion of me is more important than anything else. And if I do get rejected or persecuted, made fun of, etc., I'm going to say that's a compliment because somebody is seeing Jesus Christ in me. But I don't just walk alone. See, the Christian life was never meant to walk alone. Yeah. What's the Bible say? It says, flee youthful lusts, right? right? Pursue love, faith, purity, and so forth, with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. We rise and fall on who our closest friends are. Yeah. Ladies, I mean, you've talked about this so many times, allow me to repeat you. Okay. A, a girl's relationship, a young woman's relationship with God, rises and falls on who she dates. Exactly right. Because of which way she's going to choose. Big time. So I say to students, look, number one, who do you want to please more? God or your lost friends? I'll give you a stat. You like stats. I love them. You quote stats on your show all the, all the time. time. I love them. You are the stat man. Yes, I am. Do you know when these students who graduate from high school, they will probably never see again 90% of the people they leave after graduation. You know what? That's true. That, uh, when I heard that, I said, no way, but that, that's actually true. How many people from your high school years do you still see or in any way affect your life? Hardly, seriously, hardly any. Maybe 2%. Probably at best. Yeah, oh yeah. So what are we doing? Here we are at high school. We're letting people influence us to keep us away from God. People that we'll never see again. Man. So how are we to look at these people? How are we going to do that? The same way Jesus did, with incredible compassion. Yes. You know, when we have more pity on our lost friends who have negative pressure than we do have fear we will change our campus. Absolutely. And when our hearts are broken over all the drugs they do or all the, the lies they believe yeah. and all the broken homes and all of the, the stuff, you know? Yeah. When, when we have a broken heart over that and we love God's opinion of us more than their opinion of us, that's when we can really get into their heart and change our world. It gets hard on a kid too. And when, when I stop and think, you know, we get a lot of emails from the show and as your calls, you get on the radio, I'm doing good with my friends, kids will say. But when I go home with my mom and dad, it's a different story. Well, actually, a, a healthy home can help you deal with negative peer pressure. Because most students from a broken home, think about this, there isn't anybody nurturing them. Right. Saying, hey, I realize you got, you know, messed around at school. I realize you, you don't, aren't loved very much at school, sure, sure. but I love you. Yeah. If you don't get that nurture at home, you go off to school with an empty cup. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Please fill my cup. Please fill my cup. We go out to our friends. If we're not centered in God, right? We go out to our friends and we say this, please like me so I can like myself. Please accept me That's so true. I can accept myself. Yes. Putting way too much value, way too much power in your friend's hands. All right, now watch this. One friend comes along and says, boy, I'll tell you what, Denson, you're awesome, man. You can really sing. You got a great future, right? Okay. You go, man, I'm feeling good. Next day, somebody comes along in a bad mood, had a fight with their parents, whatever. I said, Denson, you're a loser. <laughs> One day you're up, the One next day, day you're bad. down. Yep. The question at this point isn't, what are my friends saying about me? Sure. You know, the negative pe pressure friends. Sure. But rather, what's God saying about me? Yeah. Remember, we got to get anchored with God or we're going to be blown all over town. Sure. My friends actually told me one thing, Dawson. They said, uh, your friends are like elevator buttons. Some of them take you up, some, some of them take you down. He said, but the wild thing is, is if you're grounded in Christ, you always know where you are. And you're surrounded by some Christians that will hold you accountable, encourage you, believe in you. Then you can stand. Yeah. Listen, 
We're going to continue to talk just a little bit more about peer pressure and how it affects your lives. And Dawson, I'll ask you in just a minute to come back and help me close the show. But, but coming up next, we have an incredible artist. His name is Jeff Dale. You're going to love him. So stay tuned right here to the Alvin. <laughs> You know, I've been doing ministry a long time, and I think the thing that I've noticed the last two years is that people are finally saying, I need a safe place where I can talk to somebody about what's going on inside of my heart of hearts. So I want to encourage you guys, if you have a computer, log on to our website. It's simply this, www.alvinson.com. When you log on there, you'll see our homepage, and on the left, you can see all the different categories and places you can click and different sites you can look at. At the same time, you'll notice right there in the front and center, there's a prayer request. And we've created our own staff just to be able to respond to you and to answer you and to help you. And I want to encourage you guys, if you want prayer, if you've got something you're praying about, here's what will happen. When you click prayer request, you'll get a form. You just simply fill that form out. When you get done with that, you'll send it to us. We'll take it. First thing we'll guarantee to do for you, we'll respond back to you. We'll let you know not only that we're praying for you, but we'll let you know what God says about your situation you're going through. At the same time, we print those out. We scratch out your name to keep you confidential. And we got some churches that, uh, that pray for you. And they will pray for you in that specific need that you have. Also on our website, you can click over to Bible studies. Guess what? You can do a Bible study every single day. And it's pretty cool. At the same time, we get so many different letters from kids on some common topics. And we've identified those to be about 34 topics. And you can run down these 34 topics, anger, frustration, suicide, and there'll be some things that will encourage you and help you. Those topics not only will help you, they'll help you when you have other people that you're trying to help that have those problems. We've also got what I consider to be a great site, and it's about our television show. If we're talking about a topic, whatever that topic is, we take all the research and all the notes that we've done, and we create a book on it. And we take this book and we simply offer it to you. You'll click on the TV icon, the minute you get there, you'll see a different page for that. You can click on the booklet offer, see all the covers of the books. Click on which book you want, fill out the form, and we'll mail you that book. It has been amazing to me how many people email us, how many people write us, and just let us know what's going on. And I want to say thank you very much. We have come to bring our praise to the one who changes hearts. We are moved by your love as you give yourself to us. And we pledge to give ourselves that the world will know your grace. This grace that captures me. That the world will know your grace And it's grace that covers me oh, I want to see the Spirit moving through the streets Touching everyone who brings to our knees So won't you pour out from the rhythm of my soul And let it flow
I asked my parents first because I know that they have a lot more wisdom than any of my friends would. Um, they've been through a lot of stuff that I've um, gone through and, and they love me more than my friends do so I know that they'll give me the best advice. I probably wouldn't go to my parents first. I'd probably go to like somebody who's like a bigger you know, Christian than I am. A lot of times I, I have like, you know, I have it to go on to my friends first instead of like praying about it and stuff if I have a problem or something. And like a, but like the most important thing is like you need to go to God first. You know, before we close this edition of the Al Denton Show, I want to thank Jeff Dale. Man, what a great Christian artist. If you hadn't heard some of his music, I encourage you guys to pick it up. And you know, my friend Dawson McAllister, I, I don't think anybody could have delivered that type of information to where everybody can understand it. Moms, dads, parents, grandparents, kids. And I've asked Dawson just to stay on for a minute because his communication skills have always just blown me away. And, and Dawson, I believe that, that you'll close this show out 10 times better than I do it. And I'd ask you, if you just to, to square off your camera for a minute. Um, and I want to do this. If kids are out there watching, or mom and dads are out there watching, from whatever lifestyles they come through, whether they've been broken homes, or single parents trying to raise their kids, or their kids in school that have tried drugs and alcohol and maybe gotten pregnant, anything they can do, paint their hair pink, purple, whatever, just to try to feel like somebody loves them. We have all different types watching. I want you to talk to the camera for a minute, just talk to them personally, and just share with them, if they're dealing with that, and they're being so influenced by other people, tell them how they can right now get a grip on what's going on in their life. Well, I would uh, I just say this to you. All of us at one time or another have sold our soul to have somebody accept us. Al Denson is no different. I'm no different. Everybody in the studio one time or another has cheated God in some way to be accepted. You know, you may have given your body away sexually. You know, most girls, when they give their body away, are not saying, I want to have sex. They're saying to themselves, how can I keep my boyfriend? In a recent survey, they interviewed over 100,000 teenagers, and 90% of the teenagers said, when I go off to school, I don't know anybody at school who really loves me. If you don't know somebody who really, really loves you and esteems you just for the way you are and is willing to change your life, peer pressure will be one of many things that will destroy your life. And that's why you must go back to your anchor. You say, what do you mean? The anchor is God himself. And God loves you so much, he's already seen all the things that you have done all the ways you've sold your soul, whether it was drugs, well, we don't even have to go into the list, do we? Because you know what they are. God has already seen all of that and said, I love you. I have always loved you. You may be an enemy of mine right now, but I have always loved you. And that's why I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins. Jesus stood up against negative peer pressure. He stood up against all that was wrong. He is the perfect sinless one. And when he died on the cross for you, he took all of the stuff that we have done before him, all the ways we have trashed him to get acceptance from others rather than acceptance from him. He's paid for all of that already, died, rose again on your behalf, and now he is alive. Now listen to me. And he's saying, you may be alone on campus. There may be no one to turn to right now. But why don't you turn to me? Why don't you let me come into your life? And he will change you. That doesn't mean that you'll be accepted by everybody. The Bible is clear. You will still be hated by many people. But I'm telling you, God will love you. And then as you trust him, he will lead you to some Christians who will help you walk with him and do the right thing. Why don't you do that right now? Why don't you, where you are, Ask Jesus to come into your life. You can do it, and He will transform your life. You understand, the way to have peace, right, Dawson, begins with the anchor, right? Jesus said, peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, not as all these people trying to, you're trying to please will never give you peace. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not what the world gives.
Listen, we're out of time on the Al Vincent Show. Dawson, I just wish we could keep going and going and going. This is unbelievable. If you're still dealing with the peer pressure, you've heard what, what Dawson's talked about. You've, you've simply said to yourself, man, I need God. I, I want you to do this. See this book, Peer Pressure, Powerful Positive or Potential Problems? And Dawson, you clearly spell that out. I want to give you this book. Inside this book, there's about 8, 12 pages of stuff that I honestly tell you will help you if you're struggling with peer pressure. I want to give it to you. Here's how you get it. You simply log on to the website at www.aldenson.com. Click on the TV icon. And then you're going to see all these different books, and you'll see one titled Peer Pressure. Just click on it. You can download it. You can have it in the next three minutes. And as you start to read, as you start on that journey, looking for that anchor to hold you firm, you'll understand what you've been missing the whole time is understanding how God feels about you. Hey, I want to thank you for watching The Alvin Show. Dawson, golly, what a privilege to have you, you on here. I am so blessed you're here. Listen, keep it tuned in, man. Every single time we come at you with more stuff. So don't go away, because we'll see you next time on The Alvin Show. Yeah! Woo! We want to hear from you. Write us at the Al Denson Show, Box 220, Grapevine, Texas, 76099. Or email us at aldenson at aol.com. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next time to The Al Denson Show. The Al Denson Show is an outreach of Celebration Ministries. We received so many calls and letters from parents saying, Help me, my kids are out of control. They have no respect for authority. They're hooked on drugs or on alcohol. They don't come home at night. What do we do? Well, I want to tell you about a safe place. This place is called Heartland. And Heartland is about restoring your child through a relationship with Jesus Christ. But they're uniquely different in the fact that they offer work programs to also instill discipline in your child and get a pride of respect for work in there. They have a dairy. They got a farm the kids work on. There's a Christian school the kids attend so they continue to get their education. There's recovery centers that the guys stay in. There's girls' homes that the ladies stay in. They hang out with other kids just like them. They're in Bible studies. They're focused programs. And it's all a part of restoring your teenager through a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a safe place where you can send your child. If you need help, please email us. We'll send you all kind of information on Heartland. Hey, listen, our kids are worth saving. We've got to act now.